When we hear the word ego, we normally think about someone with a superiority complex, right? However, according to most spiritual teachers, that is just a small portion of the ego. Are you aware of your own ego? Do you even have one? Get ready for the news. In simple words, the ego is the false you, the one that you think you are, but you really aren't. It's everything you believe to be and was seated in you from day one after you were born. It includes your name, your race, your genes, what your parents and family members said you were, and you believe consciously or unconsciously to be true. It is what you think and feel about yourself and others. It is what you think and feel about things and situations. It is the judgmental you. It's your emotions. It's your pain and even your excitement. Many people think they are their bodies. That one is very popular. And you see people doing all kinds of things to their bodies while trying to be more appealing or more valuable to the world. But the good news is that you are something way beyond that. You are something much greater. You are unbounded. You essentially are a spiritual being having a human experience. You are the light. You are your soul that temporarily resides in your body. You are eternal. You are the consciousness behind your thoughts and the feelings. So you may be wondering, so what the heck with that, right? Well, understanding the ego and how it works is key to your evolutionary process. We all have egos. There are not so strong egos, strong egos, and very strong egos. Living unconscious about our egos is probably the worst problem for the human race. It causes wars, divisions, depression, marital fights, power struggles, among many other bad things. The ego has some characteristics that make it stand out easily. After some practice, you will be able to recognize it in yourself and in other people. For example, people who always say they are right, people who normally say I told you, or loud people seeking attention, or people who constantly fight and manipulate others are just a few examples of big egos. Compulsive thinking, regardless of the kinds of thoughts, is pure ego. Feeling emotional pain on a permanent basis is ego. But who or what energizes this ego? Well, the answer is you. You energize your ego when you identify with it and continue to feed it through the permanent interaction of your thoughts and feelings about things. You reinforce the notion that they are true when in reality they aren't. This happens when you get lost in your thoughts and feelings, losing awareness of your true self, and the world around you. You get disconnected then from the present moment. In my case, I had a very strong ego and I am still in the process of dissolving it. At some point in my life, I became a compulsive thinker. I think this happened to me during my teen years when I tried to stop being the kind of nerd boy I had been as a kid. I remember myself seeking popularity and validation from my teenage classmates in middle school. So after having been a brilliant student until eighth grade, I turned into a lazy and absentee one. Everything was just about fun and appealing to others. I kind of got lost in my own fantasies about life. I was then expelled from middle school after the second year, and again I was expelled from high school after the first year. I would just not attend school. I ended up finishing high school in a school where most of the students had similar stories. And by the way, that's where I met the woman that would later become my wife, and I don't regret that. But I have to be honest, we had a lot of fun, and I have to admit that we were very unconscious kids. Thank God we made it, we survived, and never got into trouble or drugs. When I entered college, even though I was still partying a lot, somehow I managed to get back on track as a good student. However, the damage of unconsciousness was already done. I was identified with my ego and disconnected from my true self. I made poor decisions. The career I chose was not in alignment with my true self desires, even though it seemed like it was. I somehow had the feeling that something was missing, but I didn't know what it was. So I attended some motivational seminars where you could get glimpses of the spiritual teachings, but what they said was not clear enough to wake me up. I also took therapy, but I didn't really find the answers I was seeking for. In time, 
I realized that psychologists would take the place of your consciousness and from that perspective, work with your ego. In therapy, I was not allowed to know what was really going on and at the end of the process, I had gained no consciousness. I was again left at the mercy of my own ego. This was my experience and I'm not saying that psychology doesn't work. There certainly are several approaches and different theories out there that I'm sure can help people. In my case, it gave me some temporary relief, but it didn't provide me with the answers to the big questions. It didn't teach me how to regain my consciousness. Another approach to spirituality happened to me when I was still a teenager. At that time, I dated a woman who was very involved in the Sikh religion from India. She knew how to meditate and even introduced me to whom at the time was the top spiritual teacher for the Sikhs. He even baptized me as Siri Yangzin. I remember this teacher saying to me, you have an ego problem. But at the time, I couldn't understand what he was talking about. It was until more than 20 years later that I was able to solve the riddle. After all this time living La Vida Loca, I finally found myself at age 45 making contact with the spiritual teachings that ultimately revealed to me all the answers I'd been searching for. That's when the real shift occurred in me. That's when I finally learned how to live a peaceful, rich, healthy, and conscious life. We need to teach our children about consciousness and spirituality. They need to have the tools to protect themselves from falling into the hands of the ego. They need to be free from the pressure of pretending to be who they really are not, just in order to appeal to a society. They need to learn that they are unique and that the greatest give of all is already within, in their true selves. They need to learn how to meditate and be okay in silence. They need to learn how to just be. If you like this video, please share it with your friends and head to our website for insights, tips, and much more. Once you are on newmetv.com, please sign up for our email updates and share your comments and experiences with us. Practice meditation, live in the present moment, and always be the silent observer of your thoughts and feelings. This is New Me TV. Let's evolve together.